to your colleagues. We shall continue our working day and then give floors uh, to Principal Deputy Chief Monitor of the OECE Special Monitor Mission to Ukraine, Mr. Alexander Hook. Good afternoon. It was yet another violent week in eastern Ukraine. The figures speak for themselves. Last week, the SMM recorded a 60% increase in the number of ceasefire violations. In terms of SMM recorded explosions caused by the use of mortars and artillery, including multiple launch rocket systems, the statistics are even more alarming. Last week, the SMM recorded at least 3,930 multiple launch rocket system, artillery and mortar explosions. The previous week, the comparable number was 1,595. That's a 145% increase. 95% of the violence was concentrated around five main hotspots. The most kinetic hotspot uh, was in areas east and northeast of Mariupol. Last week, a quarter of all ceasefire violations were recorded there. Another quarter was recorded in the Donetsk airport, Yasinovata, Avdivka Triangle. 20% in the area between Krimske and Slovina Zerbsk in the Luhansk region. Another 20% in areas southeast and east of Svetlodarsk. And 5% in areas between Popasna, Peromaisk, and Troitsk. The Krimske Slovino Serbsk area is in particular worrying. Compared to the previous week, the area actually saw a staggering 650% increase in the number of recorded ceasefire violations. Of those, we have been recording 1,647, which were explosions caused by artillery and mortars. Keep in mind, in this area, the week before, we recorded just 34 such explosions. Dear friends, a careful look at the figures reveals an underlying fundamental future of this conflict. Of the 1,647 explosions recorded in the Krimske sloviano serbsk area, over 1,600 of them occurred during the space of one day, first day last week. The following day, the SMM recorded not one explosion in that area. This eruption of violence passed as suddenly it had come. On the same day, a similar firestorm was recorded from the Balceve. In just three hours, the SMM recorded over 900 explosions there. The intense episodes of violence are unfortunately not uncommon. Last Sunday in Avdivka, we recorded 22 salvos of multiple launch rocket systems and an additional 180 explosions. The following day in Khorlivka, our monitors recorded 227 explosions in just four hours. Perhaps the worst outbreak was in the areas east and northeast of Mariupol. Monday last week, in just four and a half hours, our monitors there recorded about 1,400 explosions, including about 600 assessed as caused by multiple launch rocket systems, artillery and mortar rounds. The following days, our monitors recorded no explosions in the same areas. The violence actually ceased almost immediately after the Joint Center for Control and Coordination had decisively and 
crucially jointly intervene to facilitate localized adherence to the ceasefire. It was a textbook example of how the Joint Center for Control and Coordination and the perfect example of the results that can be achieved if a coordinated that approach is being taken. I hope it sets a precedent and I hope that the Ukrainian and Russian Federation officers in the JCCC continue working in this manner, in this joint manner, as the very name of the center calls for. These episodes obviously demonstrate the extreme volatility on the ground. But they also show that violence can be turned off, just as it, it is easily being turned on. All this violence comes with a human cost. Last week, the SMM confirmed seven civilian casualties, including one fatality. This brings this year's civilian casualties confirmed by the SMM to 21 fatalities and 95 injuries. I repeat again, this brings this year's civilian casualties confirmed by the SMM to 21 fatalities and 95 injuries. None of this, of course, would happen if there were no weapons present. Luhansk and Donetsk regions cover more than 53,000 square kilometers, and so obviously the SMM, with over 700 monitors on the ground, cannot be everywhere all the time. And even where our resources allow it, we have not been allowed to fully exercise our freedom of movement as provided in our mandate given to us by all 57 OEC participating states. The sites still actively prevent us from entering certain areas. Last week, our freedom of movement was directly restricted on six occasions in government-controlled areas and on 17 occasions in areas not controlled by the government. Sometimes these restrictions are aggressive, involving threats of violence towards unarmed civilian monitors or direct attacks on their equipment. On Thursday last week, for example, in so-called DPR-controlled Petrovsky district in Donetsk city, six men with their fingers on their triggers on their assault rifles and with one of them chambering around into his weapon prevented the SMM from proceeding further. The next day, an armed man fired a shot in the air 20 meters from an SMM patrol in so-called LPR-controlled Snaminka. And on two other separate occasions in government-controlled areas, SMM unmanned aerial vehicles were targeted with small arms fire. In Aslanove on 21st of March and in Orykove Donetsk on 26th of March. Despite these threats, attacks and impediments, our monitors still manage to see many proscribed weapons in violation of respective withdrawal lines. 66 in government-controlled areas and 26 in areas not under government control. The obvious casual link between the presence of weapons and the use of weapons in violation of the ceasefire is borne out in our figures. 27 of those weapons seen in violation last week, 8 in government-controlled areas and 19 in so-called DPR-controlled areas, were in areas east and northeast of Mariupol, precisely where we have observed intense fighting. Here in this picture, for example, you can see what our monitors saw in so-called DPR-controlled Kozatska Saturday last week. These are three T-64 main battle tanks. It is no coincidence that when our monitors returned to this area on Tuesday this week, armed so-called DPR members violently denied them access. One so-called DPR member actually fired three shots from his assault rifle into the air, and then another six rounds 
into the ground between him and the unarmed civilian monitors. In government-controlled Aslanove on Tuesday last week, uh, one of our unmanned area vehicles spotted this 122 mm self-propelled artillery piece. The same connection can be seen between the presence of proscribed weapons and impediments to our monitoring. Aslanove, you will remember, is where our UAV came under small arms fire. Dear friends, this is not rocket science. If there are no weapons, there is no violence. If you want to end this violence, if you want to turn it off permanently, you must remove the weapons. It's as simple as that. As usual, at the end of my statement, I would like to inform you about the latest mission numbers. As of today, the mission has 720 monitors, of whom 608 are deployed to the east. In addition, there are 338 Ukrainian colleagues and 93 other international colleagues working for the OEC Special Monitoring Mission to Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hook. Colleagues, do you have any Do you have any questions? Yes, the question will be asked. Запитання буде поставлено українською. Будь ласка, надягніть в навушники. Crimean news, two, two questions, little question. One of the sources uh, from the humanitarian for the humanitarian tension in the occupied territories of Lugansk and Donetsk regions uh, uh, include uh, include uh, companies, Ukrainian companies that were that were taken over by the, by separatists on the first of uh, March. Uh, people were working there and they were getting their salaries. Uh, some some companies stopped uh, their uh, operation. I'm interested whether the SMM is actually monitoring the operations of such companies and the situation they are facing, the staff, the local staff are facing. So can you comment on the situation on the ground? And uh, comments uh, on the last meeting in Minsk, what, what, what were the discussions about? impacts of the so-called takeovers of companies in areas not controlled by the government. I would like you to be referred to our reports where we report anything that we see in this respect. Uh, depending on access granted to us, of course, we will be documenting any uh, issue that is visible to our monitors and we will continue to do so publicly in our reports which are available on our website six days a week in the English, Russian and Ukrainian language. Um, with regard to um, effects of uh, the same in areas controlled by the government, we do the same and we had been previously been reporting about uh, impacts of the same nature uh, to uh, factories and, and other industries in areas controlled by the government. Uh, we also, on a daily basis, uh, report on the developments of the blockades of the rail routes that lead from and to uh, areas not controlled by the government. All of those findings is also available in our reports on our website. Um, I'm, uh, to your second question, I'm not in a position to comment on behalf of the Trilateral Contact Group. Uh, the OEC Special Monitoring Mission, however, uh, stands ready to monitor the recommitment that apparently has been made to the ceasefire to come into effect on 1st of April, uh, as well as to document whether or not the actual withdrawal of heavy weapons does take place around the same date, and as to whether or not uh, the disengagement at the Stanitsa Luhanska disengagement area in fact does happen. I have to reiterate again at this juncture here that the role of the mission is to document uh, the implementation of commitments taken by those who control weapons, positions and armaments on either side of the lines and we will continue to do that as much as the sides permit us to do so. Uh, we don't have further questions. Thank you, Mr. Hook. Looking forward to seeing you here next week. Thank you. Шановні колеги, наступна подія о 15:30.